Hello everyone, this is Jimmy and welcome to episode 21 of FTB Infinity Evolved Skyblock Mode. My goal for today is to upgrade this Blood Altar that we laid out yesterday to at least tier 4. Why tier 4? Because that is a point at which you can fully automate the production of life essence. Until then, you have to be involved in the process somehow. Either by draining your own blood into the altar, or by manually killing mobs to drain their blood into the altar. So, to upgrade the altar, we need these uh, runes, I believe that's what they're called. At least blood runes. Blood runes have no effect other than bumping up altar tier. As you go up, there's uh, other runes that have meaningful effects. For example, the rune of self-sacrifice increases the amount of blood you produce in the altar when you click the uh, sacrificial orb. The basic rune, though, the blood rune, it's quite easy to make. It takes blank slates, any shard, uh, a basic orb will do. So as soon as I think apprentice, nope, that's, I think weak is the basic orb. Here we go. So that's a mana diamond. Let's start by making that. I think I, uh, I crafted a whole bunch of mana diamonds earlier with our automated mana. So all you have to do is dip this in the altar, and you will see it absorbing some of that blood. Uh, we fill our altar a little bit, and after a couple seconds, it should turn. Uh, basically, when there's these like particles coming off, it's crafting, and after a couple seconds, it should turn into the blood orb. Maybe how long does it take? Doesn't tell us in this version of NEI. After about a minute of waiting, it transformed. So, take the weak blood orb, right click it, and now it says current owner, Jimothy Cow. That's me. We can put the blood orb back into the altar, and it continues to absorb blood from the altar and store it in my uh, LP network. It stands for like life points or something like that. Um, and we can use that kind of as like a form of wireless energy to power rituals. So, that's a blood orb. Next, we need to make slates. These are made by dipping arcane stone blocks, which I think are rather easily crafted. It takes us some aspects, but yeah. Uh, I'm going to make a large batch of these. Crafting these items only takes 1.9 vis per, of, uh, per craft now, because my helmet now gives a 5% vis discount because I put the... Um, I put the goggles of revealing in it. This other armor that can have a similar effect too. It's... Oh dear, I shift click that. Maybe I shouldn't have shift clicked that. Ah, uh, there we go. I'll say I don't think I had enough aspects to craft them all, but uh, the discount effect isn't really that significant until you get a lot of discount sources. So for now, you know, going from a hundred percent cost to like eighty percent cost, not that big a deal. You save twenty percent. Going from, uh, say, later on, you can go from like thirty percent cost all the way down to. 15%, right? And that makes your aspects go more than twice as far. Anyways, is my wand fully charged? Still missing Ignis. Uh, let's go bring home a few more Ignis nodes from the nether. I can't really use these nodes for charging because if I drain them, well, if I drain this one, it makes the center node uh, less effective at bullying. And if I drain any of these, then the bully could just take the last aspect from them and that would kill the node off. That's obviously bad. As soon as I enter the nether, a creeper blew up and unlit my portal. That would be very awkward if not for the fact that I could order my uh, flint and steel remotely. But uh, I'm glad I didn't get stuck in the nether. I replenish our stock of nodes. Not that you ever really deplete nodes if used correctly, uh, but fully recharge our wand. And I think it's time to finish crafting the rest of these stones. Flag. With our arcane stone blocks crafted, let's start turning them into roots. So, if you put one into... Oh, it does tell you the drain rate. If you put one uh, block into the blood altar, over it takes 1,000 LP at 5 LP a tick. So that's, what, 200 ticks? Uh, to turn it into a blank slate if your altar is tier 1. Then you can leave that t slate in longer if you want to, and if you have a higher tier altar, they make a, you know, a reinforced slate, a tier 2 slate, a tier 3 slate, 
Uh, you get the point. A tier 4 slate, 5, and I think there's even a tier 6 slate, maybe, possibly. Well, there isn't. Um, when you pipe items into the Blood Altar, however, uh, nothing keeps it from putting an entire stack of items in there. That's very suboptimal, because then uh, it tries to craft the entire stack of items at a time, and um, it crafts them in parallel, but it does not increase the rate at which it drains blood. So basically, you just don't get the final products out for a really long time. So, uh, to fix that, if you, if you use a transfer node, um, you can use a tra this special pipe called a hyper rationing pipe. And anything that connects to it, the transfer node will only put one item into that target inventory. So, um, if you only have one, a one, one long pipe, you can also just put the hyper rationing pipe in one of these upgrade slots. And it turns the connection here into a hyper rationing connection. So that way, it'll only put a single slate in here. And then I can fill that up with my own blood. That should be at least a thousand blood I put in there. And after, uh, I guess, 10 seconds of crafting, it turns into a blank slate. When I take the blank slate out, a new item goes in. So the next thing I want to do is I want to set the system up to not put in new items unless there's at least a minimum amount of blood in here. Right, because this item, uh, okay, so this one finishes, but I suspect if I put in another arcane stone block, this one will not have enough blood. And if it doesn't have enough blood, the recipe here has a drain rate. Basically, usage is the rate that it crafts forward when there is enough blood, and drain is a rate that it crafts backwards when there isn't enough. But here, there's not enough blood. It's now crafting backwards. Basically, the progress is working backwards. We don't want that to happen. In future versions of Minecraft, this is very easy because the blood altar emits a comparator signal proportional to fullness, like most storage inventories, right? Chests, tanks, etc. But in this version of Minecraft, it doesn't do that. No matter how full or empty the blood altar is, it does not emit a comparator signal. So, uh, the next solution then is just to use the RF Tools liquid monitor. This can just measure the fullness of any liquid tank, and you can even control a redstone signal. So, I have it set up to monitor the blood altar, and if it's less than 20% full, or, you know, we can pick any number here, um, but if it's less than 20% full, emit a redstone signal. And the transfer node here is redstone sensitive. So if it receives a redstone signal, it stops putting items in. So right now the tank is more than 20% full. It just put an item in. After this one, after this piece is done crafting, I suspect it'll be less than 20% full. At which point it doesn't put an item in until I add a bit more blood to the altar. When it goes above the threshold again, an item goes in. So this is a uh, pretty simple way. It's, in fact, it's probably actually simpler than doing the comparator math um, of shutting off your item input when there is a lack of blood in the altar. The liquid monitor very conveniently takes care of the input side control. Then for output side control, I just use a filtered item conduit. So uh, there are no big item filters in this version. So you only have like the, if you use Ender IO anyways, you only have the five slot item filters. So I'm gonna have filter the, uh, the extra or the insert side. So I can say, you know, certain items go into this chest and slates I'm going to store in the drawers here. So when I put a bit more blood in this now, we go above the threshold, causes a piece of, you know, any any item can be input. But in this case, a piece of arcane stone gets put in here, it gets crafted, and then when it's done, it gets extracted into the drawer. So all I have to do is keep this supplied with sufficient blood, and we have... Somewhat automated crafting of blank slates done. For now, I'm still sacrificing my own blood to the altar, so it's convenient to have more total hearts. You can also eat these for uh for hit points, but uh would you actually equip these? Found it. You put it in on the I don't know what tab this is, Tinker's Construct Armor tab. You put it there, and that should increase our max hearts from 10 to 20. Well, when I get back in regen range here, hey, game, regenerate my hearts. There we go. Now I can click this thing a few more times before I have to pause to let regen do its thing. If you're trying to optimize your blood production, it's probably best just to eat some miniature red hearts because they give 10 hearts each and mob farms produce tons of these. 
Although if you do that, you'll very quickly find that you fill your altar up. And then it's like, well, no, no point draining more of my blood into it because I can't hold any more of it anyways. So anyways, I'm going to leave this uh, here to craft for a little while. Actually, do we have enough? 21 slates. That is enough. Um, I think it takes two slates per to make the blank root, right? So uh, I'm going to craft some of these runes. We have to toss some flint into a mana pool. But uh, we should have some blank runes soon. upgrade the altar to tier 2, you need 8 blood runes, or 8 runes of any sort, any sort, but uh, we'll start with blood runes. So just replace these 8 pieces of cobblestone, and the altar will upgrade. There won't be any visual effect to tell us that the altar is upgraded, but uh, you're going to have to trust me that it, that it is the next tier. I suppose I won't blame you if you don't trust me, though. I have lied to you before, usually on accident, but um, to check the actual tier of the altar, you can right-click it with a divination sigil. It will tell you. So uh, it says right there, there is, it tells you exactly how much essence is in the altar, the altar's cap, and the tier. So as I fill it, and this goes up. All right, so I can... But that's what I added uh, just an off switch here. Um, yeah, and then you can also just right click the divination sigil in the air and it tells you the current essence in your LP network. It also shows it in this like little UI element off on the left there. Um, the higher tier your blood orb is, the like the highest tier blood orb you've used, the highest or the higher your LP cap is. So right now I'll have a weak blood orb, which means my LP cap is pretty low at 5,000. Anyways, I'm going to craft a bunch more um, of these runes. For the time being, I just want to upgrade the altar's tier, so I don't really care for the effects. That means I just need a whole lot of blank slates. After a bit more poking myself, I got enough runes to upgrade our altar to tier 3. So when you build a tier 3 altar, you need these altar caps. Uh, for tier 3, it's just glowstone, so, you know, that's very easy to make. However, the subsequent tiers, tiers 4, 5, 6, will be a bit more complicated than that. You can see our altar is now at tier 3. Fill it up again, because it'll take another, what, 28? Like Spike. 28 uh, blood runes to get to tier 4. However, these caps have to be made from large bloodstone bricks. So large bloodstone bricks require weak blood shards, which can be duplicated once you have one, but you have to still make your first one. The first weak blood shard comes from killing mobs with a bound blade. So the bound blade here uh, requires a binding ritual with a sort of a zephyr. Oh boy, this is going to be a lot. <laughs> um, all right, so we need to make a sword of the zephyr and set up the binding ritual. Let's start up with the sword because this will probably be more work that requires an arcane infusion um which requires the runic matrix from thomcraft Alrighty, down the rabbit hole we go so the runic matrix requires a full mana pool um it's it's crafted in batania's runic altar we can make the arcane attuned stone now we have all the we can make blood runes however we need one of each tier one batania rune so let's just get started Mana Steel, Bone Meal, Sugarcane, Fishing Rod, and Water Shard. That doesn't look too bad. One of the worst parts of this is just collecting all the items. Let's start with the Rune of Water. I'll throw all that on. And let it craft. As soon as mana starts being consumed out of the pool, our flowers turn on again. So it's good to see that our mana automation is working as intended. When it's done, throw the Living Rock, hit it with the wand, and there's Water Roots. All right, I'm going to do the other five types of runes off camera now. Have you ever meant to throw something into a mana pool and throw it into a crucible instead? I totally just accidentally threw a stack of nether quartz into the uh, crucible. Thankfully, it's very easy to clean that up. And thankfully, a stack of quartz isn't particularly valuable. But uh, I felt pretty stupid doing that. Have all the four elemental runes crafted. However, the rune of mana requires something special a balance shard. These are used in quite a few different uh, recipes, namely, they're used to make Salus Mundus, which is used everywhere. Um, 
and the recipe is two of every aspect plus a you know a shard and i think the way the easiest well the way i've always done these it's definitely not the uh, cleanest way but it's to take a stack of every shard type so all, all six basic shard types um and then if we scan them with a thermometer we can see that each shard contains two of its aspect one precantatio and one whatever the crystal is so if we toss five you know one of each shard and then the sixth shard in that should create a balanced shard while leaving behind five um five precantatio and five uh crystals for the precantatio you can toss in some mana steel after that to suck that up and turn that into thaumium because mana steel plus four precantatio makes thaumium and then you just let the crystal evaporate so let's see there, there is an order you have to do this in if you do it in the wrong order you produce the wrong shard i believe let me see yeah you, you want to avoid creating these imbued fires i don't remember what order you do it in however here's the puzzle water must go in before fire that's it water is before fire fire has to be before air Wait, this is impossible now. Air has to be before fire. Um, well, you can get around it by throwing these one at a time in. Like, hey, where's my balance shard? Well, maybe, maybe you need to do two at a time. Oh, look, where's my balance shard? What am I doing wrong? Balance shard is two of each plus the last shard. Right, I have something stat in here. One, two, three. Do I have two stacks of water? Give me a big doofus. Let's try this again with uh, six actually different types of shards this time. Whoops. So I definitely caused this problem for myself when I cheated and gave myself all the Thomcraft recipes. If you just never bother to learn these various imbued fire recipes they're not very useful they're in fact very dangerous they can be world destroying and not very useful um so if you just never bother learning them like you don't cause this problem where you can't put too much in the crucible at once because you can only craft stuff you know how to make so anyways there we go now it's working as intended and every now and then you see i have 10 uh i need some inventory space you know, I have 10 uh, Precantatio in there. Well, I can throw in a couple Mana Seal and get that out as well. We can simplify this process later, but for now, this will have to do. I got bored after making 10 of those, so uh, I'll set up a system to automate that later or something. Um, maybe we'll use the Thaumatorium, maybe we'll just use Droppers, I don't know. Deal with it later. For now, I want to make that Rune of Mana. With all five runes, or yeah, all five Batania runes, blood runes, and a tuned stone in hand, let's begin the crafting of the altar, the runic altar. Runic matrix? So, as I said, this takes, I believe, one entire mana pool, maybe more than one mana pool. Uh, it'll take a long time. In fact, so far, we have not even begun. Oh, there it is, the first sliver of the progress bar. Um, so yeah, this will take a long time to craft. But worry not, the uh, the altar will be, or during the time that the altar is crafting, we can take that time to set up the uh, actual place to put the altar. But I think I'll extend this over, this platform over a little bit further, and we can just jam the altar right over here. In addition to the altar itself, you need some number of runic pedestals to actually put your items on. Uh, 18 is probably enough you need one for the center item um let me let me actually check what is the largest number of uh items that go there's only 83 recipes to look through oh boy some of these are take a lot looking through all 83 pages the worst offenders seem to be the awakened ecorium or ecorium i don't even know how it's pronounced uh equipment taking 
12-ish items. However, there's one that doesn't show up in JEI for some reason, but the uh, creative portable tank, which is, by all practical intents and purposes, the, the last item you make in this pack takes uh, a lot more. I think when we get around to doing this infusion, I'll just add more pedestals. Um, for now, I'll just set up something with like, you know, 12-ish pedestals to do the Awakening Gorium gear. I've got the Runic Altar set up as per the Thaumonomicon, which shows you, uh, one, the vanilla recipe. If only we could have that recipe. But um, the layout here, all that we're waiting for is the actual Runic Matrix block itself. So uh, let's check on the status of that. I imagine it's not even halfway yet. Just about halfway. Well, just about a third of the way. Um, all right, in the meantime, then, what can we do? Let's work on stabilizing the altar. So this altar has a value called stability. Generally speaking, um, recipes also have a value called instability. So, for example, the creative mana pool has dangerous instability. It varies from probably like trivial or something up to dangerous. Uh, and the more instable a recipe is, the more stability you want your altar to have to counteract that. If your altar is that stable enough, bad things will happen. Generally, this means stuff like um, like lightning bolts will fly out of the altar and knock your items off their pedestals. Uh, mostly undesirable effects. So, the, its stability is very easy to achieve in this version of Thongcraft. Just surround your altar with a lot of symmetrically laid out mob heads. And because I'm going to use a whole lot of them, I'm actually going to put them underneath the altar. So we have all this room down here. I think the altar looks 10 blocks up and 5 blocks down, as well as in like a 20 block radius or something for stability items. In Thongcraft 4, there is no limit on how much stability can be provided by a single item type. So uh, this is a, I don't know how wide, I think it's, it's about one chunk. I think it's yeah it's situated in the intersection of a chunk because i situated my ultra across four chunks but it's about uh 16 by 16 i guess it'd be even it's either 15 by 15 or 17 by 17 of zombie heads and i don't know exactly how many it is i just know that it is enough so once again uh this should be almost done well we got another third of the way there um unfortunately i'm out of things to do while i wait for the last third so i think i'm just gonna wait for the last third to finish well uh, i guess i'll keep poking my finger on the altar i remember something else we can do while we wait for that crafting to finish we have to make the arcane furnace so we can turn items into their constituent aspects by throwing them into a crucible but then we can't use those aspects for anything except alchemy they're i guess too like unrefined and it's just a pure goop if however we use an arcane furnace we can turn the aspects into Essentia, which can be uh, filtered into their various types and like stored indefinitely and used in arcane infusion. So for this, we need an alchemical furnace, some number of alembics. Um, I think you can use up to three per. So uh, how about I'll make a, a handful of furnaces and alembics. Storing the stabilized Essentia also requires special containment. So need to make a jar from mana glass and what wow. ordered jars uh these also take a little bit of of the aspects from your wand to make but uh sure, 22 is enough to get us started you'll eventually want at least one jar per aspect and ooh, it looks like this uh altar is now ready so living wood i mean living rock put that on hit it all right will not help you dodge bullets. I get it, because it's a matrix, like the matrix, you know, never mind. Um, so, anyway, ooh, we got a trophy. I'll use the trophy as a spacer. Come on, nope, that's not where you go. Turns out the trophy is an exceptionally poor piece of scaffolding. There we go. So, you have to put the uh, runic matrix there, and then you hit it with your wand. Which I think I left in the crafting table. Up here. Ow, that was loud. Uh, you can turn off now. Thank you. 
get your wand on the runic matrix and oh no what am i doing wrong all right something's not right i think there's a minimum of each aspect required in your wand to make this work so my the uh the the wand that i had didn't have any aqua or air in it there we go and it forms this multi-block neat as for the alchemical furnaces just place the furnace place three alembics above each and you'll want to give them some type of fuel for now we could just run them on furnace fuels like coal however if you want slightly improved uh, results you can use alumentium which doesn't look that difficult to make uh, uh, it just makes the alchemical furnaces slightly faster or more efficient or something like that i don't know um good enough though we'll use coal for now so to make a sword of the zephyr i need great wood log two air shards a diamond and a thomium sword as well as these aspects let's start with the aspects so air will come from air shards modus will come from ender pearls and potentia will come from coal these items also contain other aspects so uh for example coal also contains ignis will this process will separate the ignis from the potentia uh, putting one in here and the other up here and then we can hit them with jars to empty them out or we'll, we'll come up with better ways to empty out these alembics later but um we'll put ender pearls into this one and coal where's my last stack of coal oh the first one i did was coal this was air shards and process um so the extra aspects what is uh, ender pearl actually made of in this version I might be wrong to use Ender Pearls for Modus. It might not actually have Modus in it. Indeed, it does not. It has a, a solar system, man walking path, and precantatio. So I guess this is not going to get me anywhere. Um, these Alembics do also only hold 32 of an aspect. If you let them fill up, they stop working. So you have to periodically hit it with a warded or with a jar to empty them out. Jars in this version also, I think, only hold uh, 64 at max. Let me test that out. No, maybe they go up to 250 something. Yeah, jars will max out at 64 essentia per. So uh, trying to deal with essentia by hand like this is going to drive you very crazy very quickly. We're going to need to come up with a better system, and soon. But don't worry, I do have some plans. Compared to Thomcraft 6, where warded jars hold 250 essentia each, uh, items tend to contain a lot less total aspects. Like, here for actually for modus, right? A trapdoor contains two tree and one modus. Um, whereas in Thomcraft 6, it would contain, you know, about four times as many aspects. Likewise, recipes use a lot less aspects. So in the end, it's probably about a wash, but uh, just something that requires some getting used to. Anyways, I think I'm almost done processing my aspects here. All right, I've processed all the items we need for now. Um, in fact, I processed way more than what we need for this recipe. We need a total of 24 aspects, and I have probably ballpark a thousand. Uh, nice thing about Thumbcraft 4 alchemical furnaces is that they are lossless. So as long as your inputs are multiples of 64, you will always have, you know, neat full jars of output. Um, anyways, that covers the essential part of the infusion. Now I just have to get the actual items. This recipe calls for four items on the outside pedestals. It doesn't exactly matter which four pedestals you use as long as they are symmetrical. So, hit the thing to start, and it uh, bakes for a bit, and it draws aspects in from the jars, with a pretty cool visual effect. Once it's done drawing in the aspects from the jars, it draws the items in, destroying them in the process. At this point, you can cancel the, the craft if you like by taking the item off the center, but you don't get any destroyed items back, so I uh, would not recommend. Alright, here's our Sword of the Zephyr. Now I just need to set up the ritual of binding to turn it into an actual bound blade. For this, we're going to need to make the ritual diviner. It's not technically required, however, trying to set up rituals without it is 
quite a pain and uh, you still need to make these inscription tools so it doesn't really save you anything to not make it um it requires a few of these runes and or the sorry inscription tools which are made from runes these are actually the same set of runes i use to make the runic altar uh when you when you do crafting no, stop don't put that in when you do crafting on the um infusion the Batania runic altar with Batania runes, you get them back when the recipe is done. There are three tiers of ritual diviners. Uh, the basic one can place dusk runes and pla can place dawn and dusk runes. We'll upgrade it as we go. For now, I need to set this to the... Yeah, I think it's a ritual of binding. So for this, we need... Eight, no, 24 total ritual stones and a master ritual stone. So if memory serves me right, let's pin these. These are made from, yeah, a bunch of reinforced slates. So uh, I guess it's one reinforced slate per ritual stone, and I think it's four per master. So I need 32 reinforced slates. They turn on again, please. Uh, do I have enough? No, I have one. All right, time to make another 31. I've been bleeding into this altar for quite a while now, but I think I finally bled enough to get 32, well, 38 slates. All right, let's go turn these into ritual stones. Well, one more thing we have to do. Uh, re this requires a apprentice blood orb. So how do I make prismarine? Oh dear, we have to make an alchemy catalyst? I mean, we have to make the chemistry set anyways, right? All right, make me one of these. Dipping a... Dipping a... Uh, uh, what are these called? Brewing stand into the blood should give us alchemic chemistry sets. These are useful for blood magic alchemy, um, which is one of the... I guess blood magic has like three main features, I'd say. There's alchemy, the blood altar, and rituals. So it's one of blood magic's three major features. This also takes a piece of golden chalk, so that's mandrake root, golden nugget, and ritual chalk in here. I hope I have enough altar power. The fact that it's not doing anything is probably telling me that I don't have enough altar power. Dang it! I'm gonna do a, something a little hacky with this altar and just try to get it to have enough power to do this craft. I eventually want to build a proper altar. Um, but by growing some trees around it, our altar power goes up tremendously. So now, hopefully, once that altar recharges enough, this uh, will will start working. Please work. That's going to be enough. Some other ways to increase our altar power then is to put a empty chalice on it. So that goes up to X2 from X1. The skull provides the X1. And replace the skull with a wither skeleton skull. Now we're up to X. Three. Wait, is that just recharge rate? Actually, yeah, this number is recharge rate, isn't it? Um, but in any event, this is helping. I believe a dragon egg can also help. So let's go. Uh, remember that dragon egg I dropped into the void, but didn't actually drop into the void? Let's make it come back to us. By cheating, of course. Thanks, cheat mode. All right. So by placing this dragon egg on or near the altar, it improves our altar power a little bit more let's see if 3800 will be enough it might need to have enough oh wait there it goes but once it has enough altar power it does the swirlies and spits out the golden chalk i remember there's one recipe in this pack that requires a tremendous amount of altar power also sometimes you get negative effects from doing witchery so with the golden chalk in hand, we can make an alchemy catalyst, grab some, was it nether quartz? That can transmute into prismarine. All we have to do is place this catalyst underneath a mana pool. By dirt. Throw the uh, item into here, and now that the catalyst changes the recipes. So, you see, with the catalyst there, we can, it becomes, uh, nether quartz becomes prismarine. Without the catalyst, it becomes mana quartz. And we can dip our prismarine into the blood. This recipe takes 5,000 LP, which means it takes 1,000 ticks. Um, 
That's a couple of minutes, I think. Turns out it's just about one minute. So same thing, pick up the orb, right click it to bind it to us, and now we can use this to actually craft the ritual stones. One more blood orb needed. The master ritual stone requires at a minimum a magician's blood orb. So this requires 25,000 LP, however we can still craft it in our 10,000 LP altar by just bleeding into it a lot while it crafts. Um, what is its craft rate though? Let's see. If its craft rate is too high, 30 a tick. If its craft rate is higher than the rate I can regen, I might have to go get some hearts. In fact, let's go just get some hearts right now. Of course, any recipe that uses a blood orb can just use a higher tier one. So it turns out I didn't have to go on that whole prismarine journey. Ah, uh, oh well. After about a minute again of bleeding into here, bleeding profusely into our blood altar, we have a magician's blood orb. Now that I have a higher tier blood orb too, we can see that our essence limit is much higher. That bar on the left side, which used to be full, is now, I mean, basically empty. All right. So, with this, we should be able to make the Master Ritual Stone. Uh, there we go. Alright, we have one Master Ritual Stone, 48 Ritual Stones, and all that we need now is an Activation Crystal. Please don't be a rabbit hole. A weak Activation Crystal will do. Um... Oh no. One of the components then for the weak activation crystal has to be made in the chemistry set. So you place a blood orb there. Most recipes have a minimum blood orb tier. Uh, for this recipe, the uh, apparently apprentice is too low. But uh, anything would do. Let's see, for simple catalyst. Yeah, apprentice is fine. Sugar, redstone, redstone, glowstone, gunpowder. Oh, I did two glowstones and no gunpowder. Turns out you need to give it the right items, too. When it's working, you can see these little swirlies coming off of it. And this drains 200 LP out of my life network each time it crafts. So if we check with our divination signal again, we can see that that number is going down. Uh, I only needed one of these for now. Turns out I'm not allowed any freebies. Even the glass here is difficult to make, so this takes magic hails and crystallos, some other stuff that we have, but these also have to be made in the alchemic chemistry set. Here we go, here's some warded glass, and then, hope oh, that is everything it takes. What is this? Colored obsidian, regular obsidian, please. Yes. All right, that makes a lava crystal. Then I can dip this into our blood altar. Um, 10,000 LP. That's not too bad. And after a little while, we have a weak activation crystal. Right click that to bind it to yourself as well. And we're going to leave our, um, our blood orb in here for a little bit to charge up our life net, our life network, essence network, whatever. I think it takes about 50,000 although I don't know the exact numbers, to activate this ritual. But we can set up the ritual now. So uh, if memory serves me right, this ritual has the ritual stone at the bottom of the thing. So just put the ritual there, right click, hold right click it for uh, with the ritual of binding, or sorry, with the ritual divider set to the ritual of binding, and it places all the ritual stones for you. Not that I have leftovers doesn't seem good. 24, didn't I? Wait. Oh no, I made 32, didn't I? I still shouldn't have five leftovers, right? I should have four leftovers. I don't know. Let's uh, try activating the ritual. So if I don't have enough life essence in my um, life network, I think it just kills. It either fails or it kills me. Let's see what happens. No, it looks like it activated. So that must mean I had enough. Then I throw the Sword of the Zephyr there. Make sure you put out the fire that spawns on the Master Ritual Stone, because when it's done, when it's done, the Bound Blade will pop out of here. Um, and if you didn't put the fire out, it will burn your sword. Go, go guess how I figured figured that one out. 
I've definitely burned my sword before. So you uh, shift right click the sword to activate it and when active you can kill things with it. I don't know if it works on passive mobs. Uh, but when you kill mobs with it they have a chance to drop those weak blood shards that we're after. And that's really the goal here right is to get weak blood shards. So let's see if I can deal a few kills from my mob farm. Look, we got a trophy for that blood orb as well. Ah, all right, so let's put all this away. Um, I think the easiest way to get the, the kill mob is probably just to go to the end. I, I tried to steal from my mob farm, but it wasn't going very well. So let's go to the end and kill some endermen. And when you kill them, they have a chance to drop these weak blood shards. I'm going to get two. Uh, you need one to use right now, and then one to duplicate later. Well, that one doesn't count. I don't think it's 100% to drop, but so far I've gotten one off every other minute. Okay. So maybe it is 100%. Alright, anyways, that's enough. Let's head back. Bye-bye, and... Turning the weak blood shard into large bloodstone bricks, which are the capstone. It's also done in the chemistry set here. So... Where's my blood orb? Go. Go? No go. Why are you not going? Did I do it wrong? Four ritual stones. Well, those are blood runes. Ritual stones. Go. There we go. We're going. This makes eight, I believe, and we only need four of them. Um, so, ow. I think the fact that that hurt me is telling me that I don't have enough LP in my life network. Oh, the reason that's hurting me is because the Bound Blade, while active, slowly drains LP from your life network. So by deactivating it, I no longer have anything, you know, constantly draining a little bit of LP from my life network. So, this should be good to craft now. Uh, how much does it take? 500? I should have 2,500. It seems no matter what I do, there's something still draining LP from my life network. I think it's because this ritual is still active. Uh, if I just break that, we can reclaim the blocks for this ritual too if we need it for something else. But I think that should take the constant load off my network, my LP network now. Oh no, I see what it is. It's because this is trying to craft. Never mind. Um, I need to take this out until I actually load 2500 LP into my network. Sometimes blood magic doesn't give you the uh, most clear feedback as to what's going on. Yeah, okay, now I'm actually building up LP. Over the magic 2500 number, now let's see about making those large bloodstone bricks. I feel like I should have just cut this episode into, you know, two episodes at some point. But we're, I thought we were close to the end like 10 minutes ago, so I figured let's just power through it. And, uh, well, here we are now, going on 40 minutes. Oh well. So, replace these capstones with the large bloodstone bricks, and then replace those blue cobbles with blood runes, and hopefully we will have a tier 4 altar. Last blood rune, and please be tier 4. Aha! It is! We have a tier 4 altar now. Awesome. So, that achieves the goal that I set for myself at the start of the episode, uh, building the tier 4 altar was a bit more involved than I expected it to be. I forgot that we needed to make the Thumbcraft infusion matrix, whatever, to get here. But at least it's done. And that's infrastructure that will be useful later, too. Um, the next step, then, is to fully automate the collection of LP by setting up a system where we can spawn mobs in and have mobs die automatically and yada, yada, yada. But that is a challenge for tomorrow because this has dragged on way too long already. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video and I hope to see you in the next one. Take care. Bye-bye.